7 himself. It's Mr. Daniel Craig. Yeah, that's a pretty suave entrance, Mr. Bond. But are you ready for the royal family? How do you get used to it? I don't know. Tuesday was the London premiere for No Time to Die, Daniel Craig's final outing as 007. And the guest list featured some familiar faces from Buckingham Palace. Let's take a look at the night's royal encounters. There's Prince William, Kate Middleton, Prince Charles, and his wife Camilla making their way to meet the stars at Royal Albert Hall. First up, we've got Craig shaking hands with the Prince of Wales, perhaps thanking him for saving the country so many times over the years. And is it just us, or is Kate thrilled to be talking to the iconic secret agent? You can imagine why I've come back to play. Well, Ana de Armas wasn't hiding her excitement when she met Kate's husband either. Meanwhile, Rami Malek gave us full, well, Rami Malek. And is that Prince Charles getting a laugh from Phoebe Waller-Bridge? I mean, it's everything you can dream of in so many ways. Billie Eilish and brother slash collaborator Phineas also made it across the pond. You Billy sings the movie's theme song, No Time to Die, which the siblings co-wrote. We can't wait for the Bond song. One word to describe. Bond? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> it's gonna be Bond. Daniel Craig's final time playing James Bond in No Time to Die hits theaters October 8th. The Royals' night out follows an eventful weekend for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Speaking at Global Citizen Live on Saturday, it was the couple's first public appearance since daughter Lilibet's birth in June. And while in this country and many others, you can go almost anywhere and get vaccinated, billions of people around the world cannot. William and Harry continue to have a strained relationship and it remains unclear where or when we'll see the brothers reconcile. So what is the situation between Harry and William now? What's their relationship like? The relationship between Harry and William is still very much one of distance. And I don't just mean physical across the Atlantic, but they just aren't talking that much. You know, that's exactly how sources close to William have put it. You know, there is still some feelings of anger there over the way in which the couple sort of carried out their departure from their royal lives. And, you know, I think for, for William, that's something that he clearly hasn't been able to come to terms with yet. They are very different men. And I think William has certainly become someone that is really living his life for the crown, for the institution now. And Harry has really sort of bucked that and gone in completely the opposite direction. So you can see how they'll never see eye to eye. And unless both sides can acknowledge that, they'll never move forward.